1 2 3 4 Welcome back to Technical and Pictorial Drawing at HelveticaMediaMade.com.au In this episode we're going to explore drawing a packaging net using a manual drawing method. The way I like to get started, in, in my drawing I'm going to want to draw this whole drawing as one rather than drawing individual pieces. I'm going to draw a packaging net that will go, when folded up, will create a cube. So I think we have a good idea that a cube has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides to a cube. So I think it's best if I take a piece of scrap paper like this one and I just figure out how big the whole drawing is going to be. So I just sketch it out roughly. I'm going to make the sides of my cube 50 millimeters across. Each one is 50. I then have to allow for some tabs. I'm going to have tabs on these sides. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Like that. I'm going to need a tab as these sides fold right round and I'm going to need a tab on the end. So if I make them 10, what does that make my whole drawing? My whole drawing is now going to be 50, 100, 150, 200, 210 that way and it's going to be this way 50, 100, 150, 160 this way. So I know that the drawing that I've got to make is 210 millimeters this way and 160 that way. That gives me a good indication of what I've got to do and how I'll be able to do that as one which is the best way to keep all of my lines parallel. I'm on my main sheet of paper here. Uh, I'm not really sure where I should put it on the paper but let me just make a little margin on this paper at 40 from the edge of the paper. I like to use the edge of the paper to create a straight square line. Hopefully that's parallel. I'm going to do the same thing at this end. I'm going to keep it 50 back from the end of the paper. It doesn't really matter exactly where you put that as long as you make a margin to hold it square. Now looking back at my design I'm going to come in one, two, three, four sections of 50. So let's do that. One, two, three, four sections of 50 and I'm going to go the same thing at the top here. 3, 4. Once I've done that I can rule these construction lines lightly. I don't worry about how long I make construction lines because they're nice and light. I do hope I've got enough room on this paper for my drawing. I think I have. So I had 450s like that plus I needed 10 for the last tab. Ten here. Okay, looking back at my rough sheet of paper, if I am <coughs> situated the drawing on my margin there, then I'm going to have to come up ten and then fifty, fifty and fifty. Let's see if I can work that out. So that would make that would make 160, wouldn't it? Am I going to make it? I think I'm just going to make it. In fact, I'm going to bring this line down a little bit. That's the sort of thing that happens if you don't work it out precisely at the start. I'm going to bring that line down to there. Now, using my ruler from both sides, I'm going to come up 10, 150, 
two fifties and the third fifty. I'm going to come up my ten fifty and my third fifty. Now I'm going to just join all these lines up to make sure that my drawing is sitting really square and parallel. So now I've drawn the whole drawing and you've seen that it doesn't matter if you make mistakes, you fix them. My first 50 was here. My second 50 was here. Okay, let's look back at the sketch again. I've got 10 up at the bottom for that tab there. Then I've got 50 for this. I've got my second 50 for this for this row here and my third 50 for that square there. I now need tabs from the middle. So I'm going to come down 10 and up 10 to make these tabs. Up 10 and down 10. Draw a line across there and a line across there. Okay, I now have uh, my whole drawing organized. We could just extend these lines a little better here and here bring in the top square okay now it's time to heavy this in and you've got to take care to do the right lines tabs have a little bit of an angle on them not quite 45 probably about 30 degrees make all these marks with your ruler or set square at the same time to preserve the same angle. I'm going to come back the other way now. Give that around about 30 degrees. I hope I get these in the right place. one here and one at the end. I find the, doing this first gives me the right place when I'm coming to heavy in my lines. Okay, now I'm going to heavy in the outline doing only the vertical lines that I need first. I always do all of the lines that are parallel. All of the vertical lines. Then I'm going to heavy in all of the horizontal lines. Taking care to get the ruler in the right place if I can. Should have got a bigger set square out. And I think I have one more. Which leaves me now to create the fold lines. Fold lines are a dashed line. This is why you need to do your construction lines as light as you can. To allow you to come back over with heavying in lines. T 
taking care to keep it nice and parallel. Then I have a fold line at this end and there's a fold line between every cube uh, sorry every square I meant to say and one here so the three conventions for a packaging net hang on just wait till I finish this line there are three conventions for a packaging net the first convention is that the thick continuous lines represent cutting lines this is where the object will be cut out by a die cutting machine the second convention is that the dashed lines represent fold lines this is where it will be scored in a scoring machine and then folded third convention is that there are tabs tabs are normally made at this scale 10 millimeters across with a bit of an incline on the tab anywhere between 45 degrees and um, about you know less than 30 maybe 20 or so degrees depending on the object that you're creating so there are the three conventions and that's shown you how you would form up a packaging net for a cube oh and a little tip be careful to remember you only need the closing tab on one end and not both ends and the same this way thanks for watching 